Welcome back to Quinny Connection. It well, was so great to have Brad Reynolds on the show earlier talking about fire prevention. And another guest we've had originally on Quinny Connection, Sherry Barker, is back with us with the Children's Safety Village as they're getting ready for their big fundraiser again, Kids Got Talent, back in person at the Empire Theatre here in downtown Bayville on April 3rd. So, Sherry, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great to be back. Great to have season three, especially in person. So Sunday, April 3rd, as we mentioned, really encouraging people to get out to go fill the seats of the Empire to watch all these amazing kids. So what has it been like kind of organizing this one? Um, it's been interesting. I can tell you that because, uh, again, the roller coaster ride similar to season two. Uh, so season two, we ended up having to do completely virtual thanks to your TV uh, we were still able to get the talent out there and show to the Quinty area. Um, and that part was great. Season three, we were live show, then we were not live show, then we were live show, then we were not live show, and now we are back to live show full capacity. So we are so excited uh, to bring those kids on stage, to give them the full red carpet experience that we want all of our, our competitors to have the opportunity to feel that that greatness of a live audience. There's just nothing like it. Yeah, nothing like it. So what are the age groups of kids that are gonna be competing this season? So this season we have a four to 10 category, we have 11 to 17, and then we have a groups category. So three categories, and we have the full range of ages. We actually have one contestant that is four, and it does go right up to the 17 age group. So it's great to have such wide variety. Um, and such an amazingly talented group of competitors as well. So we have uh, singers and dancers. We have piano players. I have um, Irish dancers this year. We have guitar players. We have a ukulele player. Um, it's it's really a great testimony to all of the great uh, talented kids that we have in this area. How did the submission progress or, or prog process kind of work and, and how many submissions did you have? So the, the process um, before Christmas, which seems like a lifetime ago, um, like in November, we put it out there so kids could send in their video submissions that they recorded at home um, into Kids Got Talent. And we have a selection committee of six individuals in the community that uh, continue to remain anonymous so nobody knows who they are. Uh, they go through all of the submissions. This year we had, I believe, between 40 and 50 submissions come in. They watch all of those acts, and then they select for each category their, uh, you know, winning folks. They generally try to get five in each category, and then they have five wild card entries. And then they actually pick the top 20 for the live show. Then... Within a week or, or 10 days after they've selected them, uh, we actually load onto a bus and go around to each of the contestants' house, a very uh, Ed McMahon uh, opportunity where it's like you want the sweepstakes, we come out with balloons and gold pom-poms. Um, you know, there's there, this year there was only three of us, I believe, on the bus, but out we came at each house where each contestant was um, advised that they made the live show, they got a backstage pass, they got their mask, um, and they got all of the information to get them set up for the live show at the Empire. So since that time, they have been preparing uh, like crazy. So we were supposed to air, our show was supposed to be live in February. Um, but of course, with COVID and everything going on, we were we were delayed a little bit. Uh, but patience is going to pay off because now we're, we're back in the theater for it. So it'll be worth the wait. Yeah, and there's some great prizes at stake as well. How much can these kids win? That's very generous, the prizes. It is very generous. So the, the grand champion can win $1,000, and then the category winners can each win $500. Uh, we also have a People's Choice Award that will be voted on from the people that are in the audience. We'll be able to log in and uh, vote right there in the Empire Theatre. And then we're so fortunate to have Sandra Hussey back uh, as our premier sponsor, and she will select her own winner. So um, it was the Premier's Choice Award uh, in season one. It got uh, joyfully named the Fussy Hussey Award in season two. Uh, and we are glad to have Sandra back for that Fussy Hussey Award for season three as well. So lots of prizes to be won um, for all of the contestants. The one good thing is, um, 
everybody that comes to the show has the opportunity to win something. Uh, we'll have some at auction out in the uh, foyer at the Empire. Uh, so, you know, everybody has a chance to go home with a little something. So, Sherry, how can people sponsor the event? So if anybody out there would like to sponsor or donate to uh, Kids Got Talent, they can go to our website and send us off an email and we can connect with you and make that sponsorship happen. We'd be glad to have everybody and anybody on board. Yeah, the big thing though, fill the food theaters because as you mentioned, there's nothing like having a, a live audience. So Sherry, when it comes to tickets and stuff, how can people purchase things? So to purchase tickets, uh, people can go on the Children's Safety Village website um, and the link is right off of the website or they can go directly to the Empire and buy the tickets online uh, at the Empire or go right into the theater. So all the seats this year are reserved seats. Uh, so you actually select your seats um, and then make your way out to, uh, to the theater on show day. How does the money help support the Children's Safety Village? So all of the money that is raised goes back to help with the programming and the running of the village. So the last two years have certainly been challenging for so many people within our community. Um, our children in particular have uh, paid a very valuable price uh, for the last two years. Um, the Children's Safety Village has always, up, up until COVID, we were able to have classes in-house um, where we brought the kids in and they would learn fire safety, they would learn street safety, uh, internet safety, um, a variety of different bicycle safety, all kinds of programs that, that they were able to come to the village and enjoy. So with COVID, we were unable to do that, but what we've managed to do is really work on uh, virtual programming and programming that they'll be able to live stream into their classrooms or they'll be able to um, still follow along with those safety protocols that are out there. And that the Children's Safety Village is going to be able to continue back within class and with virtual programming to make sure that all of the kids in our community uh, remain safe and all the kids that come in from, from all over. Yeah. And, and our programs do all of the age groups. Years ago, the Children's Safety Village only did the age groups, the younger grades two and grades three. Now we're very fortunate to have programs that go right up until they are ready to graduate from high school. So lots of um, great partnerships out in the community. We have uh, wonderful relationships with Belleville Police Services, Belleville Fire Services, the paramedics, um, and lots of other community organizations to make sure that we get those safety messages out to our kids. Yeah, nothing beats the real thing. I was one of those folks back in grade two and three that was down there by the by the old Belleville Police Station now uh, doing my safety training. So, Sherry, though, I've got to ask you, because we certainly heard a lot about this before the pandemic. Is, is the Children's Safety Village tentatively still on the move to another location? We are still on the docket to, to make a move. So certainly um, have had a little bit of a setback with COVID and everything going on, which is fine because all that manages to do is help you get more prepared. So when we do and we are ready to make that move, we're going to be 100% ready for that move with all of our programs in place. So we've got a great team of people that are working behind the scenes to start designing and developing um, you know, what the new safety village is going to look like. We're moving over to the old Hillcrest School property. Um, so we're very excited to be moving there. Um, and that, that team is, is sharing that information. And if you come out to Kids Got Talent, I'm hoping that they'll have a little bit of that information to continue to share with those folks that are there uh, and moving forward to continue to share those um, that information throughout the community because we are going to build. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, and more space at the Hillcrest Place too. Once again, Sherry Barker with the Children's Safety Village Kids Got Talent Sunday, April 3rd here in downtown Belva at the Empire Theatre. And we will have it on some point on your TV, Quinny, but please fill the theatre if you can and support Ch Kids Got Talent. Once again, Sherry Barker, thank you so much. Wish you and the team well and congratulations on another successful season of Kids Got Talent. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here and I appreciate all your help.